So we have a ton of new information on some of the weapons you can get in Cyberpunk 2077. It looks very exciting. A ton of rarities, legendary loot, of course. We also have different kinds of manufacturers and different types of weapons that all seem very exciting. But we also have a ton more gameplay details from the most recent Night City Wire event. By the way, if you want to see the full live stream as well as my reaction, go ahead and click on the previous video before this one where you can basically get everything. But if you want it in a more shorter format then watch this video since this has all of the juicy details that you should know of. Nonetheless, let's jump into it with all the details and as always a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated but let's get started with a few more details on how life paths work. So you likely know this by now but in the beginning of the game you get to choose your life path. It can be either Corpo, Street Kid or Nomad and this affects mostly just the beginning or at least that's what we knew up until now and after after doing that introductory mission, the game kind of like just connects you through the rest of the story and from that point on it's almost indistinguishable or is it because now we know that CDPR wants it to give us more opportunities throughout the entire game up until it's over. So the life path that you choose will present opportunities even later into the game that you can take advantage of. And some of these are done through simple dialogue options but some of these can even change and bring you entire new situations situations that you might not encounter if you don't go with that life path. Even like um, turn up new dialogue options but also opportunities with certain characters in the game including for the actual loot and how you get it especially for that legendary gear but I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. Like one of the examples given was with the side mission where you have to steal a flathead robot from the Maelstrom gang. Um, it's basically one of these missions that we saw for Meredith Stout even in like the old gameplay videos, um, it's basically going to change quite significantly depending on your starting life path. So if you're for example a Corpo, you kind of already know what Meredith is about, you kind of already know about her motivation and this in turn not only is going to make it easier sometimes for you to change the proper dialogue options and the ways to tackle that mission, but it might even open up new opportunities and side objectives during those missions to go ahead and do it, but not just for that, also later on in the game with the same characters. And the same same kinds of options but on a different route will open up for the other life paths with the respective missions. So all of these characters and everything that I'm seeing so far in the game looks really impressive from a narrative point of view. I mean everything in this game seems to be branching a lot and there's so many dialogue options with so many rewards involved that I, I think it's going to be quite difficult to nail all of them down in one single playthrough. But we also got another look or I think it's a first look at another character called Padre. It's basically another fixer like Dexter Deshaun that we saw um, a couple of years ago but basically he operates in his own neighborhood in Haywood where by the way you as a street kid will start and you even have like interactions with him beforehand so you will know who this person is and there are missions that bring you to him and a lot of other dialogue options as I've said that you will be interested in. Nonetheless I was talking about weapons so let's talk about weapons especially since loot is going to be a huge part of Cyberpunk 2077 and as a matter of fact you're to definitely want to go in and find as many of the best weapons, cyberware, armor and everything else that exists in the game. Now on the category of weapons there are multiple of these, there are three main ones for guns and there's two additional ones including for melee as well as throwable. Of course we also have different types of rarities for them as well as manufacturers so I'm going to try to cover as much of this as possible. Now of course many of these you can purchase simply from shops that you find randomly in the city. Um, some of them I even have entire catalogs of weapons in their inventory that you can go ahead and purchase but if you truly want the best of the best you will get these exclusively as weapon drops from enemies as well as loot caches that you again find randomly through the city. On the rarity side of course you can expect things like common, uncommon, rare but the highest of them all that has been presented until now is going to be those legendary guns and you're going to want these especially since they have unique abilities that you cannot find on anything else than that. The thing about these is that in order to get these legendary weapons in the first place, these might oftentimes require some really tough decisions. Like for example, a certain character in the game might hold a very powerful legendary weapon and to get it you have to kill them, but you might not want to do that since you might be fond of that character, you might want to see them live, or you simply just like the character that you don't want to sacrifice that and get the loot from him. Again, really liking these decisions 
fusions, really liking that there's an impact to what you're doing, and not just aimlessly killing everything just to get another piece of gear. And this brings us, of course, to those weapon categories for the guns. So we have power weapons which is the first one these are more similar to the contemporary weapons as in they kind of shoot normal bullets with the exception that these bullets also ricochet so for example we have this shotgun right here you can see the person i'm playing aiming down and it makes that line appear where you can expect the ricochet to happen so this already looks awesome it's going to be amazing to take and use this against enemies that are behind cover or just take them down in very unique ways then there's the tech weapon Weapons. these shoot electromagnetic projectiles that can penetrate anything from armor all the way to entire walls. Like for example we had this Nekomara sniper rifle from the Tsunami defense system manufacturer and this is basically a tech sniper rifle that can hit enemies that are even behind cover so you can shoot through those walls and you will never know what hit them until it's already too late. The final category is that of the smart weapons, basically weapons that use guided missile technology to track enemies in real time and basically shoot anybody behind cover kind of like with auto aim bullets we had a really awesome example like this shingen submachine gun from the arasaka manufacturer and it basically auto aims anything even if they go behind cover it just highlights the target and you can take them down and also the weapons look really freaking great and there's also another shotgun with eight cylinders that you can use to again auto track up to eight targets in a room and just clear it up entirely in just a couple of seconds of course i've talked about other weapon categories and as i've said there's others for the melee and even for the cyberware for the melee weapon we already saw a few of these including this thermal katana that looks really awesome also an arasaka manufacturer and again it's just amazing at slicing through enemies of course there's others in there including electric batons i've also seen like a sledgehammer as well as like a nail bat that should make things really interesting but there's many more on top that we have yet to discover. For the cyberware there's a few very interesting options that I really enjoy. Some of these you might be familiar with like for example the Mantis Blades, really iconic to this game, basically a perfect way to provide a ton of damage while having these weapons being concealed into your arms but yeah as you can see you can slice through an enemy as it freaking stands and there's others in there that are equally as powerful like for example we have these Gorilla Arms and they give you both a ton of melee damage but also quite some protection there's also the projectile launch system that you can use to shoot rockets into the enemy and even like a moon wire to take down enemies in a hitman kind of style of course i did talk about the fact that many of these can be fully upgradable and the guns have two types of modifications you can apply to them the first one are the attachments and the second ones are the software mods so attachments are everything that you can visualize physically on the weapon including scopes, silencers, barrels and everything else that you can modify for the weapon parts and then there's also like the software mods which are basically chips that you install in the weapon itself that can do two types of things. It can either change statistics like the weapon damage, fire rate or accuracy and it can sometimes even change the gunplay on a more fundamental level. Like for example it can change your regular rounds into something like biochemical rounds that can tear up through armor and there's other examples including incendiary that also looks really freaking cool nonetheless there is a ton of stuff in here that gets me really excited now let me know down below what was the coolest thing that you saw in the city wire or if there's anything that i have missed in the video in the meantime thank you so much for watching as always if you enjoyed this video also don't forget to subscribe and activate that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one